Okay, thank you very much. Uh, it's you. Okay, the, the last uh, talk of our session, and again, I'm, I, I uh, apologize that uh, we got off to a bad start today, so obviously things are pushed back uh, in terms of the break, but we'll squeeze everything in. I'm looking for a time turner if anybody has one. So uh, the next talk is given by uh, Sergey Prozendiv, uh, Nature of Polar Modes in PMN Relaxer Ferroelectric. Okay, hello. Um, uh, I have negative uh, time for my report, uh, so uh, I will try negative speed. <laughs> um, so um, this is about um, polar modes uh, in PMN. Uh, we had previous study uh, which uh, was uh, um, Monte Carlo calculations for PMN. Um, and now we developed uh, molecular dynamics, um, and uh, uh, it was feasible to calculate uh, correlators, uh, and correspondingly, we could uh, uh, find uh, dependence of um, susceptibility of, of, um, uh, with respect to frequency, and uh, uh, then, uh, by fitting uh, these uh, results, we could uh, manage uh, calculation of uh, frequencies in PMN for different temperatures. Um, so, uh, uh, let me first uh, start from some introduction. Uh, I collected some uh, selected experimental data to show you um, before uh, showing uh, our results. Um, um, so, uh, probably uh, I want to start from uh, uh, neutron scattering uh, experiments, uh, and uh, those were uh, done by uh, group Shirane uh, together with. Uh, uh, Peter Gerin, um, and uh, uh, first author was uh, Wakimoto. Um, so they found that uh, in PMN there is one mode, uh, and uh, it, it softened uh, from high temperature on cooling, uh, and then uh, it, uh, uh, after about 400 ke Kelvin, it uh, started uh, increasing, um, um, so looked like uh, this is uh, normal, uh, uh, normal um, uh, Landau type uh, uh, behavior of soft mode, um, but. Next study by Vakhrushev and Shapiro showed that actually there are two modes. And you see that behavior of the uh, low frequency mode is absolutely different from uh, what was found by Vakimoto. Uh, there is a minimum uh, at about 600, which is uh, Burns temperature. So, this looks like uh, a contradiction to me at least. Uh, but I wanted to emphasize that wave vector at which uh, experiment was done was finite. This is not gamma point. This is 0 0.075, which is a little bit uh, shifted from uh, center. And uh, I think this is important. Uh, and I will show you later why. Next study by Kamba showed again absolutely uh, clear evidence that there are two modes. One is uh, low frequency and the other uh, looks very strange. Uh, so we have kind of constant, uh, but then uh, below some, again, the same 400, uh, it starts uh, stabilizing, uh, 
uh, and uh, finally at uh, uh, so infrared uh, data by Cumber uh, showed that also there are two modes um, and uh, uh, behavior again is different from previous experiments. Uh, and so question is uh, whether infrared gives uh, looks uh, at some different scale or whatever. So what is the difference? Okay. Um, thank you. Um, and you see that at low at uh, low temperatures or one mode is of about 20 inverse centimeters, but the other is 90. Uh, so, and behavior, temperature behavior is absolutely different. So, uh, a recent work by Helen um, showed that, in fact, there are three modes. Gosh, so how many they are? Uh, we have uh, uh, something uh, at low frequency, which is softens like soft mode, normal soft mode, uh, but then uh, it uh, uh, shows up again at uh, low temperatures uh, with uh, some uh, t tendency to stabilize. But also there are there is another mode at uh, high frequency, which uh, uh, strongly. Uh, increases uh, with uh, temperature decrease. But there is also third mode uh, uh, in blue. Uh, the authors think that this is a result of existence of some nonpolar mode. Uh, why nonpolar? I think uh, the authors uh, thought that because uh, temperature dependence is absent and uh, this is uh, inherent to so called hard mode, which they call, uh, uh, how they call it. Uh, and uh, this hard mode uh, couples with some soft mode, uh, which is uh, at lower frequency. And this is why um, they see in hyper Raman spectra this mode. So this is a real mess in understanding. Uh, uh, and this is why we decided to calculate all this. Uh, frequencies and uh, to try uh, understanding that. Uh, so method we use is effective Hamiltonian um, and uh, we uh, use a random fields in post uh, in PMN um, uh, 18 by 18 by 18 supercell with uh, periodic boundary conditions. Um, as I already said, uh, we developed uh, molecular dynamics uh, code for these calculations. And uh, uh, correlators, uh, ah, this is uh, our previous study. Uh, in uh, our previous study, uh, you see that we calculated by Monte Carlo calculation uh, approach, uh, dielectric permittivity, which is in line with experiment, but what is important, please memorize it, because I will come back to this point. Um, we found also antiferroelectric correlations with very small uh, wave vector. And moreover, what is extremely important, as I will uh, show later, uh, that uh, this um, uh, antiferroelectric mode appears uh, with all domains, I mean uh, whole star. Uh, uh, we, we, we did uh, uh, Fourier transformation of our results and I saw that uh, we have with the same weights, for example, if you have 220 uh, uh, sport, then we also had with the same weight minus two, two zero or uh, zero, two, two, etc. So they are 12, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and 
uh, I think this uh, antiferroelectric correlations are very important. So uh, to find the modes, uh, we use uh, this correlator, which allows us uh, to calculate um, correlation function in time, and then we do Fourier transformation to make uh, dependence of dielectric permittivity with respect to frequency. Um, but besides this dielectric response, we also calculated some very specific response. Uh, we uh, took, uh, we uh, calculated correlator along local polarization and perpendicular, but the direction of the local polarization changes from point to point. So this is kind of um, Edward Sanderson parameter, but uh, actually it is different. Um, and uh, um, you will see that um, those correlators are allowed us to make very definite conclusions about the nature of different modes. Uh, we call uh, correla uh, correlator um, along local polarization local, uh, uh, Higgs-like mode, and uh, perpendicular is Goldstone-like mode. So this uh, is an example of our results. For 700K, uh, K, um, you see that the fit is by one uh, dumped uh, harmonic oscillator is very good. So we have just one frequency. But at 50K, you see in the inset, uh, there is another mode at higher frequency, which is uh, hardly seen, but uh, it is there. Um, uh, and uh, we call uh, the first peak new one and the second new two. Lower uh, slides show uh, Goldstone-like uh, a correlator, you see there is a definite peak. And Higgs-like correlator also has a peak. And frequencies uh, for these two are very close to new one and new two. So this is why we can uh, definitely say that the origin of these two peaks uh, are related to uh, direction of uh, the mode with respect to local polarization, which uh, changes direction from point to point. Here uh, I collected our data with ex different experiments. Uh, so new one is shown in uh, black uh, uh, squares. Uh, and you see that uh, it, it softens uh, towards uh, 400 and then stabilizes uh, and uh, actually doesn't depend much on temperature. But new 2 is strongly dependent on temperature and uh, uh, are at higher frequency and stabilizes. Uh, so we see uh, this uh, mode at uh, temperatures below, say, uh, 300, uh, so room temperature, um, and uh, above it is hard to see that because uh, local polarization, it is hard to determine it um, at, uh, because of intense dynamics uh, uh, above 300. Um, and you see experiments which are uh, pretty close to these calculations, or vice versa, our calculations are pretty close, uh, which explains uh, uh, these experiments. Um, here I showed that the nature of new one, this is the mode which uh, defines dielectric primitivity, because we see that uh, new one squared or uh, extrapolation of this uh, high temperature part 
is the same as extrapolation of the uh, inverse dielectric permittivity. So this uh, supports uh, the thought uh, um, that uh, this is the soft board. Okay, now let me uh, discuss the third mode. Uh, can you recall what I said that you should memorize that we found uh, antiferroelectric mode with small k vector? And uh, I calculated uh, a correlator corresponding to this k vector. And it behaves like uh, uh, there is some little softening, but then stabilizing. Uh, so it behaves exactly like uh, Helen found in an experiment from hyper Raman's measurements. Um, so we think that this is the hard mode, but the uh, question is how can it couple to gobble, uh, gamma mode uh, because otherwise hyper Raman would not see it. Uh, again, recall that I said that whole star appeared at once, at any time, at any point of time, in our supercell, 18 by 18 by 18, so it's uh, not very big, which uh, implies that um, we have a kind of spherical wave because in Q space, uh, in uh, a reciprocal space, we have uh, all these domains, and in total, this is a spherical wave, and uh, it can couple to gamma mode. Uh, perhaps, as I think, uh, b because of random fields. So this is kind of uh, disordered antiferroelectric. Um, now I want to... Uh, switch to another um, point um, to the potential of the um, atomic displacements. Uh, Kiat uh, in 2000 suggested uh, measuring potential from density of uh, uh, atomic displacements rho. Uh, and uh, Vakrushev and Akunio, uh, they uh, measured this density for PMN. And you see the plot which uh, Dr. Sherrington also showed. Um, so you see that uh, above uh, beyond temperature, this is one peak, but below it splits. So like uh, there are uh, off-center, uh, th there are uh, displacements uh, probably of lead, um, but, uh, yeah, mostly of lead, um, and uh, in all directions this is uh, approximately the same probability to shift uh, at least at high temperatures. Okay, we decided to calculate this, um, and this is the result. Um, you see that... Um, we have nearly, uh, at least at 200K, we have nearly spherical displacements, I mean the, the deep of the well, uh, of the uh, potential, um, it, it is at a finite radius, so we can suppose that there are two modes here, uh, rotating along uh, this deep, which is U1 symmetry, and this is what we call uh, Goldstone type mode. And the other is just uh, along the radius, which has, as you see, uh, curvature correspondingly. Uh, for example, at 50K, you see that this curvature is larger, uh, so force constant is larger, uh, and the frequency should be also larger, and this corresponds what we absurd for the Higgs-like mode. Um, so it strongly depends on temperature, but uh, Goldstone-like mode, okay, it's 
not very temperature dependent, and this is understandable. A uh, question could be uh, how uh, goldstone like mold can be stabilized. I think this is because of random fields. Random fields, I think, uh, stabilizes goldstone like mold um, just. Uh, 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 Otherwise, uh, uh, we would have uh, phase transition to uh, another uh, symmetry. Okay, thank you. That's it. Okay, we have time for uh, questions. Just wondering about limitations in terms of uh, simulation size compared with, you know, real samples? Well, no, I mean, I'm wondering if there are any artifacts in, in the, in, in the uh, uh, results from yeah, that. Yeah, anything is possible. Uh, yeah, this is uh, 18 by 18 by 18. Um, this is the uh, largest we can do. Um, I, uh, but uh, what we see, all effects, uh, uh, develop uh, in this size. So this is uh, nanoscale. Um, I believe that uh, this is enough, but uh, uh, I believe also that uh, at uh, a larger scale, there could be some other phenomena mm -hmm. which we miss. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is... Uh, for but can you look at the sample sizes that are accessible and see if things are converged? No, no, we, we, we uh, uh, also calculated 12 by 12 by 12 but not larger than 18 right, by right, 18 right. by 18. Uh -huh. uh, why uh, 18? Um, I found that uh, those antiferroelectric uh, correlations, uh, they are well seen only starting from 18 by 18 by 18, uh -huh. uh, because uh, it is compatible, you know, with the wavelengths. Um, uh, but, uh, you know, anything is possible if uh, you have larger scale, but mm -hmm. we cannot do that. Mm -hmm. um, more questions? Here, I can carry. Singer, Singer, uh, I would like to ask such a question. Is it correct to understand your results by following um, picture, simple picture? You have of center displacement iron. Therefore, uh, obviously in the symmetrical position, the potential is large, and you have mm, round uh, Mexican uh, no, uh, head, uh, round uh, uh, hole potential, yes? And uh, you have two motion in these cases. First of all, radial motion to the center, and uh, with strong potential and more or less large frequency. And second, mm, symmetry around, the four frequency should be zero, yes? The second uh, mode, uh, second motion, is mm, more or less uh, uh, Goldstone-like, and high frequency uh, radial motion, it is a uh, uh, Higgs-like mode, yes? And in your uh, graphics, I uh, observed that uh, Higgs likes most much higher frequency. Yes, I think that uh, maybe it is not connected, but several mm, years before, we observed the similar picture without Higgs, uh, 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 remarks about Higgs mode in uh, K10 crystal. In these cases, we observed normally uh, what's known uh, uh, transversal optical mode with king, not to zero, with king. And simultaneously, we observed uh, resonance mode, uh, which uh, as a um, uh, several times smaller frequency, not directly, by measured uh, damping of uh, uh, transversal optical mode, uh, transversal acoustic mode. Yes, relation approximately such. Uh, this resonance, uh, the damping, 0 0.7 tera gears and uh, acoustic, uh, optic minimum, the king, is uh, around 1.3, 1.5 terahertz. 
therefore, and uh, this frequency in 0 0.7 appears such way. It is, uh, you have the symmetry of Mexican hat violated by the crystal structure. And therefore, you have splitting, and uh, uh, this uh, points zero is terror. It is a result of splitting. Thank you. Yes, I understand. Uh, yeah, thank you. I, for me, I may not. Yep. Are there any other questions before we take a short break? <laughs> Okay, I think Ron's going to go talk to the people to see if we can extend the schedule. But uh, so just tentatively, let's count on maybe only a 15-minute break until we hear from Ron Cohen, okay? Thanks very much. <laughs>